Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and this video is all about the Algo Alpha 22 watt laser machine. Welcome back to part two of the Algo Alpha 22 watt laser machine. You'll recall in the first video, I did the initial unboxing assembly and the setup with Lightburn software up to the machine. If you didn't catch that video, I'll have a link up in the corner for you. This video is going to be all about engraving and cutting through some pretty challenging materials. I'm going to start out with this quarter inch piece of birch plywood. I'm going to engrave an image on here and then cut that out. And we're gonna check out the results of that. Next, I'm going to cut out this three quarter inch pine board. I'm going to do this in one pass, and then I'm going to do multiple passes. I'm then going to follow that up with this black acrylic. This acrylic is 10 millimeters thick or about 3 eighths of an inch thick. So this is something that I've never cut through on any of my machines. So that is definitely going to be pretty neat to check out. And once again, I'm gonna attempt cutting through that in one pass and then in multiple passes. And as a bonus at the very end, I have this piece of stainless steel and I'm going to do a test grid on here and check out what type of multiple color markings I can produce on this. Wow, this is going to be a lot to share in one video and to keep things moving along, the only time that I'm going to be in Lightburn is for this first test where I do the photo image engraving. I'd like to show you what that photo image looks like and some of the initial settings. For the rest of the tests that I'll be doing, I'll just have on the screen the settings that I'm using in the Lightburn software. With that, let's jump into the computer and get started on this first engraving. Welcome to the one time in this video where I'm going to be in Lightburn software. There's a couple key things here that I want to share with you that are going to make a lot of sense on why I'm doing this test. I think this test is very challenging for a laser engraver because first of all, when we take a look in the software, here's the image that I imported. And the only thing I did to it is I sized the image to fit on my work material. I didn't make any adjustments to this image whatsoever. When I click on the layer that's doing the engraving, we're going to see that I am going to be engraving it at the max machine speed of 400 millimeters per second. And I'm doing this in grayscale with a min max of 65% power. When the image sees pure black, 65% power. When it's pure white, it will be 0% power or not lasering at all. I have the resolution set at 300 lines per inch. In my opinion, there's two things that make engraving a photo image in this method so challenging. The first one is, it's a lot of information that Lightburn is sending out to the machine and the machine needs to interpret that so that the machine can move around and control the laser power. And that's where the Algo Alpha laser machine has a dual processor controller board. And I'm pointing to that controller board that's located just behind this front panel. Now it's gonna make quick work of that to make sure that as the machine is running, it's not stuttering or pausing to think about what it needs to do. I've seen this happen on leading brand machines that are incredibly expensive. They really bog down and have troubles with this. The second part is some of the machines on the market can't really achieve the speeds that they claim when doing a project of this size. And what I mean by that is I'm running this machine at 400 millimeters per second. There's other machines on the market that can go that fast. It just takes a really long time for it to get up to that speed. And on this project material here, that's about six inches wide, it can't get up to that speed in that short of a distance. So we're going to see if the Elgo Alpha Laser can do that. The way I'm going to measure that is when I click on the preview button here, Lightburn software is going to give me an estimated time of 18 minutes and change. Now, if the machine isn't able to reach that 400 millimeter per second during the engraving, 
it's going to start adding time onto the engraving. And this is where those other machines start going over on this estimated time by 50%, 100%. And I've seen some machines go over by nearly 200%, even though the user entered parameters that the manufacturer said it was capable of. Wow, this got done exactly when the estimated time in Lightburn said that it would do. So the dual core processor was doing its job and the speed of the machine when I commanded it to go 400 millimeters per second, it was actually doing that. So everything lined up and worked out perfectly on this. I'll remove this out and I'm gonna check this out for the very first time. And I'm definitely liking what I'm seeing here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the close up, and what I'm looking for is this outside line here on both sides, and it's perfectly straight. Normally, when a machine is going too fast for what it can handle, I'll start seeing the laser head shifting around, and that means that this line here will kind of be zigzaggy, and that transfers everything into the image. But this looks absolutely perfect. When I compare this engraving to the photo image, I saw that there's only a slight difference between the shading of the grass versus the trees in the background. And I'm also looking at the shading and the wrinkles of the clothing where uh, this guy, that's me in the middle, has the brightest on. And then he's about a medium tone of gray. And this is the darkest one, but I can still see detail in everything. So this is definitely what I check for on this test. Using Lightburn software, there is definitely a lot of different ways to engrave an image onto a piece of wood. However, I use this grayscale method because I think it's the most challenging for the machinery to produce results. As a user, I think using grayscale is a nice, easy way to get some quick results that look really great. Before I move on to the next test, there's one observation that I wanted to share with you, and that is while this was engraving at the super high speed, I noticed that the machine itself did not shift around on the work table at all. And this is due to the nice rubber pads that are found in each of the four corners of the machine. It keeps it very secure to my tabletop. Next up, I'm going to be cutting through this three quarter inch pine board in one pass, and then I'm going to do it in multiple passes. And then we'll take a look at that cutout piece to see what differences there may or may not be between doing a one pass or multiple passes. The three quarter inch pine board is complete and now it's time to check out the results. On this side, I've got one pass. I engraved it across the top. And on the other side, I've got four passes that I made. And we'll remove this out. And I can see that the side that I did the four passes on, I can easily remove that slug. And what about the side that has the one pass? That one seems to be stuck just a little bit. Let's take a closer look. Here's a nice close up. Here's that piece with the four passes on it, a nice clean cut. Over here on one pass, that's in there. I do have a nice clean cut all the way around the perimeter. And when I turn around to the back side, we'll see the ends of the shape cut all the way through. It's just at the very bottom and the very top. It had a little bit of trouble. Off camera, I'm going to manually cut this out and we'll take a look at what the sides of this one pass looks like. Off camera, I use a simple razor blade to cut the back side of this piece that has the one pass on it. And it did cut all the way through, through most of the areas. Here we'll see some of that wood grain where it was still connected and again on that opposite side. 
When I take a look at the side view here, we'll see the piece that had the one pass on it. There is actually quite a bit of charring on it. When I take a look at the one that has multiple passes on it, there is far less charring. Three quarter inch pine. To cut this in one pass seems like it's still a bit of a challenge. However, the piece that had the one pass, it did cut most of the way through around all the sides of this shape. When I added four more passes, it had no problems whatsoever cutting through. Now, this is gonna be due entirely to the ELGO COS system. And what that is, it's just a fancy term that inside of this laser unit, there's multiple laser emitters and all of those laser emitters are combined into one beam that comes out the bottom of the laser, of course. This laser machine is using a second generation of that beam combination and the result is a more focused, smaller spot of that laser beam, which allows it to cut much deeper than other 20 watt lasers in its own class. So for example, with a different laser machine that I have, that's the same wattage, but it's a generation one, I needed about a dozen passes to cut through the same board, but with the Algo Alpha 22 watt laser, I did it in only four. So that's some pretty serious time savings. You may have noticed that when I was doing the cutout on that pine board, that I had the laser guard removed off of the laser module. I did this because during these deep cuts, the laser will produce a tremendous amount of smoke. And I removed this just so that that smoke could easily dissipate away from the laser module and get exhausted outside. This guard is held on with some very strong magnets so it's very secure while the machine is running. However, it's very easily removed when I don't need it like an application just like this. Next up, I'm going to remove the pine board and in its place, I'm going to put this 3 eighths of an inch black acrylic. This is uh, also 10 millimeter thick black acrylic. And once again, I'm going to attempt cutting out a piece in one pass and then in multiple passes. And then once again, just like the pine board, I'm gonna take those cutout pieces and we'll take a look at the edges and see what those look like. This is the very first time I've ever cut acrylic this thick on a laser diode machine. So there's gonna be a little bit of learning on here. So if you're watching this video, there's a couple extra marks on that. That's how we learn. As we try some settings out, we take a look at the results and we make adjustments from there. When I place this acrylic into the work bed area, I'm actually going to put some spacers underneath it so that there's a lot of open air underneath this before it gets to the honeycomb. This is a very common practice when cutting out acrylic. I don't want any of that smoke to come back up into the acrylic and discolor it. And I don't want any laser reflections off of the honeycomb coming back and marking any of the areas. Wow, look at that, I got it on the very first try. On the side with the single pass, that cutout dropped out immediately. On the side where I'm doing the multiple passes, I initially did four passes and I could see the laser coming through on the bottom. However, the cutout didn't cleanly drop out. So in light burn, I added one more pass and after that pass, the cutout dropped cleanly through. Let's check out what these cutouts look like. Check out the cutout with the single pass. When I get the reflection on it, we'll see that it's a nice clean cutout all the way around. The side is nice and clean with just a little bit of char on the very top. When I take a look on the back though, I do see a little bit of melting. So I think if I was to cut this out again, I would speed the machine up and that would reduce the char at the very top and some of this melting on the back side. Overall though, very impressive cutout for only one pass. Here's the other cutout. 
It says four passes, but we know that I used five passes. When I catch a reflection off the studio light, we'll see that it's a nice, clean, crisp cutout once again. When I look at the back, it too is nice and clean with just a little bit of heat migration through. When I check out the side, we can see each of the passes that I made. And this is very normal when doing multiple passes on acrylic. So definitely very impressive when using multiple passes on this acrylic. Next is what I think is one of the most exciting things to check out on a laser machine, and that is color marking the stainless steel sheet. Inside Lightburn software, I'm going to create a test pattern and we'll see if we can't get some type of a rainbow color across that test grid. The light burn test chart is all complete and let's take a closer look and check out some of the cool colors the laser was able to generate. Check this out. This produced some really rich colors in the middle here, but first I wanna draw your attention to the opposite corners of the lowest speed with the highest power. We have a very dark mark and in the opposite corner up here at the fastest speed at the lowest power, we barely even have a mark. And that's what we're looking for on these test charts because the middle will produce all of some rich information for all of the different colors that we can have. When we look across the bottom here, I've got some dark blues, a light blue, and a slight white, even like a lavender color. And we get all these different shades that are possible. Videos like this are a lot of fun to make and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of those things helps the channel out, but more so, it's a great way of connecting content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.